Hello, back by popular demand. I'm here to do another R tutorial. Today, we'll be making a bar graph. So you will need to use the ggplot2 package if you're unfamiliar. Do install packages, ggplot2. It's your optimal package for creating excellent graphs and figures. And then also ensure that you use the library function to load it. If you think you've already loaded it or installed it, try it again. If it runs green, that's great. You're ready to go. So let's make a bar graph. First thing I like to do every time I go into R is to clear the global environment. Granted, we'll be putting this uh, data set right back in. But it's good practice, especially when you're starting out, to remove the list that's in the global environment. Next, step two, at least for today, we want to load the data set you intend to analyze. Today's data set that I will be using is looking at plant biomass, and therefore we're going to assess the phenotypic results, both above and below ground biomass. So we want to load that by using read CSV, and we use the direct path to that location of where the file is, which is in your folders on your desktop. Side note, always make sure you're uh, using forward slashes. If you directly copy and paste the path in, they will always be backslashes. So you'll need to go through and change them to forward slashes in order for it to properly upload into R. Now that we have our data set, let's take a look at it. As I said, we're going to be looking at above ground and below ground biomass of our plants. The accession is the name and where they're located from. We're looking at some Cetaria viridis and Italica from various locations. We're not going to worry about the treatment right now. We're just going to focus on the portion, AG for above ground, BG for below ground, and we're going to be using their average dry weight to determine the range and the size of our bars in the bar graph. And now that we have it loaded, we're going to craft our first plot. We want to use ggplot, and today we're going to be using a subset. Because we have both under our portion column, above and below ground, you can use the term subset and indicate it's coming from our data set called dry, because we're looking at dry biomass. And then in the portion column, you can indicate that we want to only focus on those that are titled in quotes, AG for above ground. So this plot will only show the above ground biomass. Then you move forward with your classic aesthetics. We're using accession for our X, Veritas, India, China, Afghanistan. Our average dry weight for our Y, average dry weight. And then lastly, we want to color it based on the treatment with fertilizer, WF, or no fertilizer, NF. But that's not everything we want to use for the parameters. We move forward, adding the next. Now is when we indicate that we want a bar plot. Geome underscore bar. We use stat identity just to use it as identified. And here's an important thing. You need to put position equals position dodge two. Otherwise, your bars will be stacked on top of each other. You will not have them side by side to compare with and without fertilizer or whatever two treatments you're comparing. So you need to use position, position dodge. So within the accession, so our China, India, Afghanistan, Veritas, we need to use position dodge in order to compare with and without fertilizer. Point nine kind of separates those bars just enough but not too much so that we're uh, overlapping with other data 
uh, on the on the graph itself. We want to make the scale continuous. So the y-axis scale will be continuous in numbers, but that also means we need to set a limit to that. And I'll show what I mean by that in a moment, but we cap it at 675 and we start it at zero. We cap it at 675 and that'll come into context when I show the graph itself, but that also shows the upper limit so that we're encapsulating all the data and that way you're scaling is appropriate for the data you're trying to portray. We're not expanding it. And next line here on 133, we're labeling the y-axis average dry weight in milligrams. Okay, so we've got our first chunk of this done. However, with your data, you need to show the error. So we need to add the parameter geome error bar. And this, we're using the aesthetic. We have to show, because error has a min and max, we use y min equals average dry weight minus the standard error dry weight, which you, in our case, we've calculated. And then our y max, average dry weight plus the standard error dry weight. So if you haven't yet calculated your standard error, do that. And that way you're gonna be able to provide the error bars for your bar graph. Again, position equals position dodge. Otherwise your error bars are gonna be stacked on one another. We want them to line up with, with the bars that they correspond to. Theme BW just means, you know, the general common black and white theme. Theme axis line, element line. We're making the colors of the lines on the X and Y axis black. The legend text, we set the size to 12. You can adjust it if you want a larger or smaller. We're leaving our x-axis title blank because we already have expl explanatory variables, which are our, our accessions. Our text remains size 12. Our y title, we're making it bold. Remember, we made it average dry weight on the y-axis. We want it to be bold. We want the size to be larger and we want to justify it 2.5. So that way it's not too low, that way it's not too high. It's more or less centered on the Y axis. This might take some time to center it just based on messing around with those values. We're making the element text. Again, we're adding the Y text size to 12 panel grid major. We're making the panel, we're not, we don't want grid lines on our graph. So therefore we're leaving it blank. The minor grid lines are also gonna be blank. We just wanna see the bars, the panel border blank and the panel background also blank. So let's take a look at what this looks like. All right. So our values are size 12. These values for the for the accessions are also size 12. Our average dry weight, as I said, is bolded. And the justification also separated it from overlapping these values. So that was the 2.5, as well as centering it on the y-axis. We colored by treatment. So therefore, it creates the legend showing in red or orange. I think it's red. The non-fertilized treatment. And in the blue, the with fertilizer treatment. And remember we set the scale to from zero to 675. That fits our largest error bar, but it's not so tight that it's scraping the top. We've properly scaled our bar graph and we've made the scale fit the parameters of our data. And this is our above ground biomass. If you wanted to title it, you could, but based on the publication this is for, we did not as we described and we created a multi-panel uh, figure. So let's also show our below ground portion of the data. We've done above ground, now it's time to do below ground. Much of this is exactly the same. We're just changing what portion of our dry data set there is from above ground AG to below ground BG. Now we're looking at the below ground biomass. 
your scale is likely to change if you're looking at two different portions. So make sure you adjust those values. Otherwise the remainder of what has been typed in remains the same and that creates our additional graph. Here's our below ground biomass. A lot of it looks very similar. All we've done is change the scaling. Lastly, before we finish this up, if you wish to export as a PNG or TIFF file, you need to add another line to your ggplot. So you're going to add plus, and then you would copy and paste this. So if you want to export a PNG, you need to add and specify that and then provide the path in the folder as well as the file name that you want that image to be. So if we wanted to move this below ground biomass out of R and into our folder for us to have ready to publish with, you need to direct it to that direct to that folder and then you need to give it a title and .png. I'm not going to do this today, but I feel like that's something important to know for those of you needing to export your images. All right, that's all I have for today. Please let me know if you have questions. Provide those questions in the comments. I will try to respond as I am able. And yeah, see you next time.